Years went past and Ibrahim tirelessly called his people to abandon their false gods and worship the one God. They evaded his question and simply replied, We found our ancestors worshipping them. It was a custom for all the people of the city to leave the city once a year to celebrate and worship. That day was approaching and Ibrahim had a plan that he hoped would make them realize the truth. On the day of the festival, the people left the city. Ibrahim took this opportunity to go to the temple. He stood before the idols and saw they had offerings in front of them. He sarcastically said, Will you not eat? When they did not reply, he asked them, What is wrong with you that you do not speak? When they still did not respond, he took a club he had brought with him and broke them. He broke all of them into pieces, except for the largest one, hoping his people would return to it. He hung the club with a strap around the neck of this idol. When the people returned, they went to the temple so that they could pay their respects to their gods. They were completely unprepared for the chaos that awaited them. In a state of shock, mixed with outrage, the leaders said, Who did this to our gods? He is indeed a wrongdoer. Several people in the crowd called out, we heard a man speaking ill of them. He is called Ibrahim. The priests ordered, Bring him here. A furious mob streamed out of the temple and went running towards Ibrahim's house. They dragged him into the temple. Alzar shouted at his nephew, Ibrahim, did you do this to our gods? He replied, No, it was the biggest idol that did it. See if your gods can speak. His words left them speechless. It was as if they had suddenly snapped out of a prolonged self-deception. The same thought crossed everyone's mind. Actually, it is us, not Ibrahim, who had done wrong. In complete confusion, Azar said, You all know very well they cannot speak. Finally, Ibrahim got his uncle to admit something never expected in front of everyone. Seizing the moment, he asked, Why worship things that can't help or harm you? You make and carve them with your own hands, but God created you and everything you create. Isn't it time to use your reasoning? Azar was unable to answer any of Ibrahim's challenges. Suddenly, the priests behind him erupted in angry shouts demanding, Kill him! Burn him! Following the priests' lead, the crowd also joined. As the chief minister of Nimrod and the high priest of the city, Azar declared that his nephew's actions deserved nothing less than execution by burning. He ordered the construction of a large structure to throw Ibrahim into a fire. They needed a fire that would not only burn his body, but erase his memory completely, creating such fear in people's hearts that they would never think of Ibrahim or his ideas again. To achieve this, they called on every person of the city to gather any available wood and bring it to the execution grounds for the construction of an enormous fire pit. In the next few days, the people built a massive structure. They soon realized that the fire it would produce would be too intense to throw Ibrahim into. Satan, always present when trouble arises, he took on a human form and proposed to build a device to launch Ibrahim safely into the fire pit from a distance. So. He created the first catapult for them.